<laughs> Everyone, welcome to Inbound After Hours. Today we have a superstar on the show. We have uh, Ran Fishkin. We've all been really looking forward to meeting you. We were quite nervous I'm earlier nervous. as well. We've <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 been following you for years. Every Friday, we, we get our team to watch yeah. your whiteboard Friday, so it's pretty nerve-wracking for us. So thank you. I am surprisingly unintimidated. I'm just as old now. as that. We all just went. <sighs> <laughs> I'm slightly shorter than average. I have very tiny shoulders. You don't. You have nothing to worry about. Just for the uh, the viewers who don't know, Rand is obviously the uh, the co-founder and former CEO of a company, an SEO company called Moz. You're also co-founder of Inbound.org. You've uh, you've wrote a couple of books, which we'll chat about later, and you are the host of Whiteboard Friday. Yeah, so we great. see you every Friday in our office. <laughs> oh, terrific. So, um, yeah, again, um, I'm sure everyone does know you, but Rand, what, what's, um, what's your story? Yeah, well, let's see, I you know, dropped out of college, like a lot of entrepreneurs, and started working with uh, my mom. I think mom and son uh, startup is probably the least venture-backable <laughs> startup combination out there, but... It, yeah, it worked out for us. Uh, we, we started as a consultancy and we're in SEO and then we uh, pivoted into software really unknowingly. I mean, we had no idea what software subscriptions or software as a service were like. But uh, what we found was, you know, there was a, a huge amount of demand and um, a dearth of providers. And so we, um, yeah, managed to sort of build a, a very successful business uh, for you know for its first seven years as a software company. Okay, Moz had 100% year-over-year growth, wow. and um, yeah, today is uh, growing much slower, but is about a 45 million dollar year business. Wow. Still amazing. Yeah. How we found marketing a software company from marketing the consultancy back in the day. Uh, it, it is totally different, but vastly preferable, at least for me personally. So <laughs> yeah. you know my. Um, I intensely dislike sales. Yeah. Like I, I don't like selling um, people on ideas or services or products. I, I hate the, I don't know, the transactional nature of the relationships yeah. that form, right? If you and I hang out, I want us to hang out because we actually enjoy each other's company yeah. and we have stuff we want to talk about and share and yeah. think about together. And we share values and, you know, philosophy as opposed to, well, you know, let me, let me see what angle I need to take yeah. with this guy in order to try and sell him a product. Mm. I, I, and as I CEO, did you it. end up going into that sales role, just naturally sort of picking out yeah. a bit of consultancy? Yeah, right. As a, I mean, yeah. as a, so first off, when we were a consultancy, yeah. my mom was CEO. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I became CEO when we, when we turned software. Yeah. Uh, but also, I was doing a lot of the sales because yeah. I was the, the SEO yeah. person, right? It's uncomfortable yeah. to marketers, isn't it? We've all... Sound familiar. Yeah, yeah. We, we've had a similar sort of, uh, as you get bigger, you need to focus more on sales, who's going to do it. It's one of you guys, and we're all marketers, yeah. aren't we? Exactly. Got the it, it is uncomfortable. Yeah, so what I love, I mean, what I love about the software business, well, what I love about the self-service software business is that you essentially get to help people, and then they reward you with their business if yeah. they love the help that right. you're providing. Yeah. So, you know, Moz was, I mean... It was about educating people. It was about uncovering all these mysteries and secrets that Google and the other search engines held. Um, it was about sharing things openly that many other, you know, especially in the early days, many other consultants and businesses and people in the SEO world didn't want shared. Mm -hmm. They thought, no, no, this is my this is my unique value. Yeah. I don't want to share that. That'll, you know, make me redundant. Yeah. And um, by opening up about that stuff, we. Well, A, we pissed a lot of people off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Good stuff. But, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right, I mean, if you're not, if, if no one's angry, you're probably not doing anything yeah, important. Yeah. Uh, it, but B, earned a, a big audience and following. And then that audience turned out to be exactly the right customers for, for what we were building software-wise. Yeah. Absolutely. That's fantastic, yeah. So you got into video quite early. and I guess you did, yeah. I yeah. guess yeah. most people know you from Whiteboard Fridays. Uh -huh. What? What drove you down that path? Well, it's, a, it's an interesting one. I'll, I'm going to be talking about it a little tomorrow um, at, at my inbound talk here. But the Whiteboard Friday was a 
total fluke, much like our software business, right? Total <laughs> fluke. Uh, Give yourself any credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know, sometimes you do things that you like, yeah. and you find a business yeah, model that can wrap itself around that enjoyment and that passion. Yeah. And I actually love that model. Mm. I think that's you know, far more than like, well, I went to business school, I got an MBA, and I saw this underserved market where I thought I could make a lot of money. And I mean, that's like the world of investment mm, banking. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of hate that. Crap, <laughs> right? That's like totally uninteresting to me. But, you know, I'm incredibly passionate about sharing my knowledge with other people. And so, you know, one of my coworkers grabbed a camera that we had ordered for, I can't even remember what we had it for. <laughs> but, you know, it was an early video camera. And he took an early video and um, I think we put it up using YouTube okay. uh, maybe not even it might <laughs> yeah. have been a pre it was like 2007 so uh -huh. right around when YouTube yeah. you know, was yeah. getting out there and the quality was crap <laughs> uh, the it was our least successful blog post in weeks like it didn't really? do well at all okay. the next week we decided to do it again even though it hadn't worked yeah mm. um, and we kept we kept with it until probably about a year two years in we started getting better at it yeah. and it earned a following yeah. so you know if you were watching whiteboard friday the first few years like you guys would be sitting around like well there's that rand guy remember that terrible video he made yeah. <laughs> what was he thinking yeah. you know but yeah. now you know that i think that's one of the the true challenges of you know content marketers and marketers who invest in organic channels overall yeah. is that you start out with a lot of low ROI, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, uh, poor performing efforts, and then over time you get better at it. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, many marketers and CMOs and, and uh, you know, executive teams are trained to think of marketing as, hey, if I put a dollar in, mm -hmm. I better get a dollar twenty out, yeah. or mm -hmm. hopefully a dollar fifty or two dollars. Mm -hmm. Our kind of marketing, right? Or, or no. Organic channels like SEO yeah. and, and uh, social media and content marketing and PR, very frankly, are the opposite of that. Yeah. You put a ton of dollars in, you don't even get one dollar out <laughs> for months and months until you start to get good at it. Yeah. And then what you find is not only do you get good at it, but you get so good that your you know cost to acquire a yeah. customer through those channels is incredibly low, yeah. Yeah. and the lifetime value of those customers yeah. is vastly higher yeah. than what it would be if they came through paid channels. Yeah. So we talk yeah. a lot about the compound and effect of, of inbound in general. And yeah. Videos the same, isn't it? There'll still be people watching Whiteboard Fridays from four or five years ago. Well, and here's the crazy part. This is, the, this is, I think, the reason we stuck with it after the first few episodes had bombed, which was we noticed that the audience that did engage with it had um, brand recognition and brand affinity in yeah. ways that people who just read a blog post, even three or four blog posts, didn't have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think video has this unique power to... Uh, to create a brand and to amplify a message uh, that is not necessarily the, the strongest in terms of raw reach, okay. but is incredibly strong and maybe even the strongest of the content channels in terms of um, engagement, mm -hmm. right? Like it, it, I think it's because we all grow up watching people on video and on television yeah, and in movies and we get this association like oh if you're on the screen yeah. you're right. you must yeah. be important yeah, yeah. you, you must be stuff. credible yeah. right and if i stick with it i think maybe you know the youtube generation or the generations that have grown up with youtube that may change a little bit yeah. for them mm -hmm. right it, it may not be that case but you know for folks who are in their late 20s to late 90s right yeah. now they have that strong association yeah. that like yeah. important yeah. video yeah. right yeah. You, yeah. you must you must be credible yeah it's a bit more passive as well isn't it so it's a lot easier to to, con to consume isn't it for a lot of people yeah. i think and yeah i think that's it, true too think and read. Yeah. Yeah. well and what you know with whiteboard friday it was one of those like we, we were fine it got better it did you know, we found that 20 minute episodes, 25 minute episodes really didn't work. Mm -hmm. We also found that like sub three or four minute episodes really didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and we have this sweet spot between about five minutes and 12 minutes where, to your point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Every Friday at lunch or, yeah. you know, at the office, a yeah. group of marketers yeah. can sit around and, and watch it and then reflect and have conversation exactly. and eat lunch or whatever, whatever it is that they do. Um, and so we, we basically took that time that you might normally spend reading a blog post, mm -hmm. and if we could get 
inside that time frame, yeah. we knew it would work. Point. I think the brand affinity has been quite, when we started our video journey, I've noticed a difference in, in the sales process as well, because I feel like people know us a little bit. Yeah, so By the time I get to their office to speak to them, they know whether they're going to like me or not. Oh, yeah. Hopefully you haven't invited me there not going to like me, but <laughs> yeah, they, they have a feel for the culture and whether we're going to work together. I've, I found that quite good in our sales process. I think that's helped a lot. Yeah, I love, I love that ability to almost um, introduce yourself in a scalable way, yeah. right? And say, it, you know, if you watch Whiteboard Friday, you're going to know that you know Rand and Moz have sort of a particular outlook on yeah. the world. Yeah. Um, you're going to get a sense of the um, the values of the company and of the mm -hmm. person, and um, you know you're going to know that we don't take ourselves too seriously, and yeah. that I never put on a suit and tie, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly, and, yeah. um, but you know, I'm also not like. Mark Zuckerberg, where I think I'm so important that I'm just going to wear the same gray T-shirt every day. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. You know, I'm going to make all the women in my company wear fancy outfits. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, right? I mean, look, yeah, Sheryl Sandberg has to wear like thousands of dollars yeah. of clothing yeah. every day, yeah. you know, to be professional and yeah. to fit in in an environment. And Zuckerberg is like, no, no, screw you! Yeah. I don't respect anybody <laughs> except me. No. So. Well, yes. We're kind of on our video journey now, hence you being here. And we, we found it really difficult in the early days with the uh, some of the kit we had. Um, some of our first videos wasn't too professional. I think yeah. I remember the first one. Yeah. Didn't record on well, the first we, podcast. Yeah, we, made, we got up and high fived each other and went, that was great. We was tense, <laughs> we was nervous. And uh, what, what's your kind of preparation tips for, for videoing? Do you just turn on and you naturally just go for it now? Or have you got a series of steps? I mean, one thing, uh, one thing I really advise is if you can avoid doing live video okay. uh, and give yourself time and practice to take, to do multiple takes, okay. um, mm -hmm. that's a really wonderful thing, right? Yeah. So, you know, one, one thing I think you will absolutely notice is that if you get, you know, um, an actor in yeah. a live situation, it's not the same, mm, yeah. right? They don't have the polish and the crispness and the flawless delivery and the absolutely perfect skin and hair and clothing and right every scene looks phenomenal but this is one of the great things about video is that you can spend the time to polish it up as much as you'd like yeah. um, and one thing we definitely observe so uh, for me I've done a ton of whiteboard Fridays right I, um, I, I do I think I've only ever in history had three where I did a take two yeah. okay. Okay. so you know, good. Yeah. Yeah, good for me, home. like it, it, I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm relatively good at it. I'm a natural or whatever. And I also don't care if I screw up. If I screw up, yeah. I'll just make fun of myself right in front of the video. And yeah. It's, it's fine. Yeah. 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 But a lot of people, anyway, as well, yeah. 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 well yeah. It's, it's really yeah. engaging yeah. for yeah. folks, yeah. actually. Yeah. 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 Great point. So it's a good tip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, but for a lot of our guest folks who come in and do whiteboard Friday. So we have, we have lots of SEO people, you know, come to Seattle and if we can get them into the office, we will. Uh, and for many of them, it's take two or take three where they really deliver it, yeah. you know, with that polish mm -hmm. and that perfection. And I, I think that's what's great about video. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're under a lot of pressures to do live video at the minute. I think we've tried it on Facebook and we went to pot a little bit. We, we got really nervous knowing that there was only four people actually watching it on Facebook Live and it wasn't until afterwards <laughs> when yeah. it got a bit of traction. Uh, yeah. But I yeah. think the, the mindset of being live, we just went to pieces. So it's never the same. Do we don't do second takes. Yeah. But, but so it's the yeah. same if it's live or not for us. But it, it's just knowing you're live and you don't have that ability to... We always say to clients, look, if you come and do a video and it's bad, we'll just delete it and do it again. Yeah. Exactly. No, nothing's yes. lost. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just having that mindset when it was on Facebook Live, we were all just oh, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Reminded me, that's the first time you didn't fluff the opening. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think do. it's just repetition <laughs> it now. Yeah. Sorry, I don't think I'm totally familiar with that verb. Fluff? Yeah. Fluff, yeah. fluff yeah. the yeah. opening. Mess it up. Mess it up. Mess it up. Yeah, yeah. Mess it up. the northern. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. We've we got fluff a good 15 episodes with little slightly different openings yeah. so far. In, in we we'll leave them in. We never found it as natural as you. We made a lot of errors of fluffs, as you say. I think we're 15, 16 episodes in now, so we're pretty relaxed. This is the first time we had a beer, actually. We usually have a beer during podcasts. Oh, yeah, there you go. Plus, we do it after work. So that works quite well, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. But 
Oh, great. And brewer, breweries downstairs, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, offices, yeah. Yeah. We're lucky enough to have a, a, a brewery downstairs, a bar, so... Uh, we, oh, that sounds we, we terrible. Just, we just, bring, <laughs> just, just bring them up. You guys have a hard yeah. life. Yeah. 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 It's awful. Uh, one thing we've noticed is you speak a lot at conferences, you're here, there, and everywhere, travelling a lot. What, what's, um, what's your motivation to do that? You don't have to do that now, do you, in the position you're in? What, what motivates you to, uh, to speak so much? Yeah, so uh, conferences and events are hugely important for me on um, basically three vectors. So one is pretty obvious, and that's marketing. Right? Yes. Yeah. So essentially getting the Moz brand yep. um, out there and being able to sort of craft and shape messages in the, in the SEO world, right? So, I, you know, if there is something in particular that I feel very passionately about and I want people to know about and want people to understand, especially if it's, you know, if it's something that our software can help them with, yeah. then uh, I like to talk about that. Usually I'll start talking about something long before our software can help people with it. Mm. And then it's, it's really number two, and that is learning from the audience uh, and from other speakers what they want, okay. right? So being able, this is essentially, you know, when folks talk about in, in startup world, uh, customer development and customer research and customer interviews um, and audience interviews, that is exactly what I get to do, mm -hmm. even with you guys here, yeah. right? Yeah. So, the, you know, technically, I suppose you are interviewing me, right? But I'm learning about what you do exactly. and I'm learning yeah. about like what kinds of, um, you know, content appeals to you, where you struggle. Okay, live video is really tough for those yeah. guys. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you know. Recorded exactly. video. I, we should do a whiteboard Friday that has some tips mm -hmm. on like, yeah. okay, how do I you make a better recorded video mm -hmm. that yeah. can perform well in search engines? Yeah. And that, that yeah. oh, yeah. well, it turns out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what Moz does is this, you know, we have this tactic where we take a video and we'll, um, we'll film it, we'll put it up on, on our own website using Wistia yeah. as the embed. Yeah. And then three months later, we'll put it up on YouTube, yeah. which seems really weird. Why wouldn't you put it up on YouTube? <laughs> well, because we want people to subscribe to Moz and to yeah. know all the videos come out through our channel so we can own the user experience. Only later do we want to put it on YouTube yeah. so that if someone does a search on YouTube, yeah. they can find it. And then we also own two ranking spots in Google. We'll own the top one with our blog, second one with YouTube. Yeah. Great, now we have double coverage. Yeah. In, in SEO, right? So it's it's those kinds of tactics. So yeah, yeah, Julie, I think we have a two-week yeah. delay, so yeah. we need to extend that. Yeah. yeah, it seems to index okay on our site first. Yeah. So like with even with the shorter delay than than you're talking about, and that's that's worked well for us, hasn't it? Do you think that's going to change? Like I know the the video landscape on SERPs has changed a lot. I mean, the the big change was that Google essentially said no one gets to rank but us. Yeah, um, which. Um, I, you know, I, I think in the, in the European Union, it wouldn't surprise me if eventually that comes under yeah, some, a lot of pressure out. yeah, some regulatory fire. I think, you know, sadly here in the U.S., you will not see any of that because uh, Google's such a big lobbyist. Yeah, of course. Um, we have legalized bribery here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not working out so well. Yeah. I don't recommend it personally, but you know, if you choose to go we, that right. Uh, what they want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to follow up on your other question. The, the, the third thing that I get from conferences is networking, networking right? So yeah. meeting, meeting people in person, you know, right. being able to say hi to other entrepreneurs and other marketers. And I, I mean, so for example, let's say two weeks ago, uh, you emailed me and said, um, Hey Rand, we put out this piece of content. We'd really love if you check it out and maybe share it. Well, what, you know, I get a lot of those, maybe I'd check it out, maybe <laughs> if it was absolutely incredible yeah, and totally yeah. unique, I would share it. But after we've met in person, mm. your, odd, right, your odds of getting me to share yeah. that have gone yeah. way up. Yeah. And the same is true for me, yeah. right? So every person that I meet that, that becomes like a, you know, especially if we get along, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. we're all hanging out and they're yeah. like, well, <laughs> that guy's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not as effective, but, but, but that, those in-person connections are super powerful. So it's, it's really those three. It's marketing, it's customer research, and it's networking. Yeah, I mean, a lot of talks today, especially Brian's, I've probably been another four talks talking about mission, core mission. Mm -hmm. So yours, what you're saying really is just add value. That, that's what drives you then giving people education, value, and that, that's what... Well, and certainly learning from them yeah, as well. So I, you know, I don't want to have this um, impression that I know everything and that mm -hmm. I, 
you know, that my job is merely to, to share all these things that I know. Uh, I don't know. Especially in this There's industry. A, yeah, yeah, especially in SEO. Yeah. That I guarantee there are 10 people in the SEO field who on any given topic know way more than I do. And where I have been able to really benefit is, is through the aggregation and curation of those networking, you know, yeah. of those relationships mm -hmm. and those, um, you know, in some cases partnerships and in a lot of cases, you know, consuming and pointing to other people's content, which is why my slide decks are filled with references to other people, so yeah. which is another pro tip. If I get up on stage and I go mention somebody, yeah. if I've never met them before and they find out yeah. that I've mentioned them, oh my God, we are best friends, <laughs> yeah. right? Definitely. Like they will bend over backwards. Yeah. They would love to sign up for Moz, right? Like. It's a powerful um, it's sure they're very human now as well, doesn't it? Like you can mention someone, yeah. but you're thinking this guy will never get back to me, yeah. and he's like, "Mars have mentioned us." Well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where that come yeah. From? yeah. yeah. I, I had a crazy experience. This was like two weeks ago, totally outside our world, but but it illustrates this perfectly. So my wife and I are huge fans of the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Yeah. We got married down in Ashland, Oregon, okay. uh, nine years ago now. And so we go back there for anniversary, We're, and we, we, we go to a show. We see one of the actors from one of the shows, like, walking yeah. outside, which is cool. You know, you're in small town Oregon, but it's sort of like, oh, it's like a Broadway star. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been in television and movie stuff, too. And, uh, and, you know, he sort of looks at us, gives us a smile. We're like, oh, man. So uh, <laughs> Geraldine goes on Twitter and was like, oh, you know, he was... This guy was smiling at me. I'm like, no, 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 no. He was smiling, smiling. at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, long story short, Twitter conversation leads to uh, him inviting us out for drinks oh, uh, oh, later. Yeah. Um, and now we're going to go see a one-man show that he's oh. putting on. And, right, right? So it just has that, like, the nice side you know. Of Twitter, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, yeah. The, 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 the platform, the, be, the ability to mention someone in a positive way or in a way that gets their attention can transform you from total strangers to come fly down and see my one man yeah. show, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Whatever the equivalent yeah. of that relationship is in the professional world. Yeah, fantastic. It's like the, the good side of influencer marketing, isn't it? Like you read a lot of stuff online. It's like kind of falsely build these relationships with people because you've got an end goal, and it's very transparent. And yeah, could come in and doing real life stuff like conferences and events and stuff. You're actually doing proper outreach and networking and you know you don't know where that's going to go or be used further down the line you can yeah. see that falseness as well can't you yeah of course you can spot that in someone am i hey i loved reading your blog url <laughs> gave me, yeah you can see I saw it someone that. after a talk earlier and uh i can't remember which one it was and probably shouldn't say who it was anyway but he was walking out it was the the guy who spoke and someone had waited to go and ask a question and was saying, no, no, you ask your question. And then she was following him down the corridor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we do is this. And yeah. he was just like, and you just have to sum it. No, <laughs> exactly. yeah. If you come in at with an ask first, yeah. it's not yeah. going to go down as well, is it? Like you said, with people yeah. asking you for shares and things. It's weird. I think the only, there's like, there's, there's this one environment where very hyper transactional relationships work. Um, and it's the San Francisco Bay area, like okay. tech startup world. <laughs> yeah which I despise, yeah. like I, I hate yeah. it, it's not for me. It works for some folks, but I, I, I really dislike that transactional yeah. sort of relationship. And I think that, you know, for some folks um, who reject that, you, you, you want to think about, okay, how, how can I build a relationship that is uh, founded on um, sort of pure doing good things? Yeah. right as opposed to me benefiting and you giving me benefit yeah. um, and I think that that's sort of a, an even better way that I've found to to relationship build than the you know what can you do for me and what can I do for you yeah. I think the, the the trade and swapping that's like the common advice yeah. but the for example hey let's you know Rand would you come hang out and do a, a podcast and a video filming series what, what is our goal here we, we want to help other people, other people exactly. in the marketing exactly. and business yeah. and entrepreneurial exactly. worlds. Yeah. And we both have that same goal. Yeah. And it benefits both of us, I guess, sort of in you know nebulous ways. Yeah. Uh, but most of the benefit is for the people who, who watch and see. Yeah. Awesome, right? Yeah. That, that is a great mission to get 
you know, me or someone ten times more important than me yeah. Uh, yeah. onto a show like this. Yeah. Great. Okay, yeah. Inspirational stuff. <laughs> let's, um, let's talk about, you've wrote two books so far, is mm. that correct? And, and have a third one. And you're on your now. third yeah. one, which yeah. we have uh, regarding ups and downs of startup culture. Is that correct? Yeah, that's my right. My research uh, proven me right. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> okay, and do you want to talk about that a little bit more? What's um, how far along are you with the with this book? Sure. I uh, let's see. As of last week, last week. Um, it is consi- the, the manuscript is considered transmitted okay. by my publisher. Yeah. Um, so yeah. traditional publishers, I'm working with Penguin Random House, yeah. but uh, traditional publishers have, have these very you know, formal sorts of structures yeah. Um, yeah. that they use. And so transmission basically means not the manuscript is in its absolute final form, but it means you get like your second of your three mm. author okay. royal, you know, you know, down payments. And, and that also that... Uh, it, you then move on from editorial to copy editing, um, but so it's in a it's in a good place. It's expected to be out, I, I think, sometime in March of okay. next year, maybe Fantastic. April, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And uh, the title of the book is Lost and Founder. Lost and Founder, okay. yeah, yeah, which I think book. describes it pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For any of you who started a company, you know, yeah, I've been there. Yeah. 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 been through the pain. Yeah, so we'll be interested to uh, to read that when that comes out. So yeah, yeah. You sounded okay. hurt then. <laughs> no, been we've been. Through it. it's, uh, it's painful. It's painful. There was start moments. Yeah. I'm sure you're mentioning your book. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this is, I think, a a journey that many people go through and feel very alone. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they, and I think all of us do this incredibly foolish thing, consciously or unconsciously, incredibly foolish thing, where we compare ourselves to only the most successful <laughs> entrepreneurs in our field. Right. So yeah. it's not hey, that guy down the street started a chips shop. It's, how am I doing against Richard Branson? Yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking, right? Like, yeah. why, why do you, would you compare yourself against him? But that, that's what we do, we right? Do, yeah. um, mm-hmm. And I think so that's true. because the, you know, the media focus is very much on the, um, the huge outlier successes yeah. rather than the you know, average everyday mm-hmm. entrepreneur. And so a little bit of the book, I mean, Moz is obviously a company that's that's bigger than many um, and and has had some success, but um, my hope was to kind of tell a, uh, I guess what you want to call a middle of the road sort of startup story. Like, okay, Moz is $45 million a year, but it's growing slowly, slower than certainly venture capital investors would like. And um, it's hit a lot of struggles and road bumps over the years, made a lot of mistakes. And I think there's a lot more that you can learn from here are the things that I would do differently if I were to do this yeah. again, yeah. Yeah. then here's how I had my amazing, incredible, <laughs> multi-billion dollar success. Yeah, that's so true. Yes, I've, just been to a, sorry, Andrew, I've just been to a talk with their partners and they had a board where they're all set up and that's all they talked about, everything they did wrong during their, during their journey to Diamond. Yeah. And I was just... Yeah, yeah, I love right, that. Yeah, writing this down. Yeah. Let's, let's us not do them same yeah. mistakes. It's yeah. very similar. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, Andrew. No, I was going to say, it's just a really nice approach to... to write a book like that and have that sort of humility to I think showing your own vulnerability as well yeah like it's kind of sympathy with people and connects with the audience doesn't it mm. yeah, yeah, yeah uh it's a little you know you pour your heart out and yeah. you have a little bit of that like <laughs> yeah. oh man how am i going to feel when people read this <laughs> yeah. and know this yeah. Yeah. but yeah. uh but yeah hopefully it's helpful Definitely. it'll bring more people around you think the same way though but that's yeah yeah sir i mean certainly Which that's the goal you're not going to reach the no. You know, there's a segment. Get of rich in five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I will not write that book. <laughs> ten minutes. No, yeah. Ten years. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think we'd miss an opportunity if we didn't talk about SEO. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. SEO being on here, yeah. and like you say, you're around the circuit. What are, what are people talking about in SEO? What are the hot topics right now that people are people are chatting about? Yeah, I'd say. Um, you, which this is usually the case, there's usually sort of the here's new opportunities and here's a bunch of things we're fearful of. Yeah. So on the here's a bunch of things we're fearful of, I think folks are scared that Amazon is eating all of e-commerce yep. um, and that people are not, that, that over time people won't go to Google and explore other channels for yeah. finding pro- goods and service and, and products and they'll, they'll just use Amazon, which is pretty scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All I hear at, at home and at the in-laws, both of them. Just go on Amazon. 
Yeah. yeah. What are you going yeah. to Manchester? It's a lot of journey staff from there now, don't they? Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a huge. Well, you can't get it on there. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll somewhere find somewhere else. else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm worried about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think that would be a a bad thing for you know the world's economic yeah. growth yeah. and certainly for entrepreneurship and um, and would eliminate a lot of startup opportunities. It's also dangerous for search, but. That being said, um, Amazon search is starting to become interesting. Amazon only has about a one sixtieth the search volume that Google does, but you know, one sixtieth is still it's it's still something. It's yeah. still a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. um, the other big fear that I hear from folks on the, in the SEO world is around voice search, yeah. um, and specifically voice answers. So voice search, not particularly scary. What, what's the difference if you type it in or if you say it? Yeah. It doesn't matter. But if you get a voice answer, that is fundamentally different from a list of results that yeah. you could yeah. choose from. Yeah. And SEO for voice answers is essentially, you know, either you're the featured snippet or you're not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you are the featured snippet, be prepared to get no value from that, yeah. right? Because Google's going to give the answer that they scraped from your site without credit. Yeah. So yeah. do you want to be that answer or do you want to let one of your competitors be that answer? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. It's, mm. yeah. it, it is not a fun game. It's not just a prisoner's dilemma. It's sort of like a prisoner's dilemma, but no one gets let out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So those are, those are on the fear side. On the opportunity side, uh, certainly we've been having the conversation for a few years around the growth of SERP features. Yeah. So not just you know the classic PPC yeah. and SEO results. Yeah. Um, and I've got some data I'll be sharing tomorrow about the percent of clicks and percent of results that show all those different ones. Awesome. Um, and there's... A, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity yeah. in everything from, you know, the knowledge panel to the featured snippets yeah. to images and videos and what, what used to be called news and is now called top stories. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a big one. I think another big one is um, many SEOs talking about uh, an emerging ranking factor. I think it's emerged over the last few years and today is quite powerful, which is sort of... Um, it's either called like searcher task satisfaction mm-hmm. Um, or, or overall searcher satisfaction, and that's essentially can the searcher accomplish their task efficiently and effectively on this page versus this other page. And Google's gotten so good at knowing that that many sites and pages that do a better job of it are outranking their competitors who have more links, yeah. better mm-hmm. keyword targeting, have done you know all their SEO markup well, have done all their technical SEO, yeah. use schema, have you know clean code, all this type of stuff, and it's like, well, this this site has done nothing right from a classic SEO yeah. perspective. Yeah. yeah, but you can do the thing you want to do there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, and you can do it better than you can over here. And so, who cares if the keyword's not in the title tag? Yeah. So that is that is shifting around a little bit. It's not. It's not overwhelming yet, but it's yeah. getting there. Mm-hmm. It's quite interesting on Twitter. Whenever you put out that as a theory over the last year or so, it's one of the things that gets quite a lot of bite back, isn't it? Yeah, In yeah. The community. That's, that's pretty fun. And then yeah. occasionally, right? Like, <laughs> throw it out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's. Saying that, I guess, yeah. right? uh, so, what's been nice to see is that um, engineering folks from Google, right? Folks on the search quality yeah. team have been pretty open yeah. like yeah Definitely. we're doing that yeah um and it's only sort of the the like webmaster trends yeah. analyst people who are like what no that would be ridiculous to yeah, use that yeah, as a yeah, factor yeah. and you have like <laughs> i'm gonna go with the people who write the code right also i tested this and i can see it for myself yep. so yep. i don't believe you, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, like, and it makes sense. It's better. Like if the users oh, get what they want, ultimately that's what Google. It is insane <laughs> to imagine Google yeah. not doing it. No, exactly. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Okay, so we're, we're wary of time. So um, a couple of things. Where where's the future then for Rand Fishkin? What, what's uh, what's going to happen in the next twelve months? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to be leaving Mars. Okay. Um, we, yeah, in a few months here, yeah. which uh, which our, our CEO uh, announced on the blog this okay. summer. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, um, not not my not the happiest thing in the world for me. But uh, yeah, my plan is to build a new new company. Oh, great. Um, great. Probably will it will not be in SEO software. I have a, <laughs> yeah. I have a non compete, but um, yeah. I'll probably do something in the marketing world still. Well, great, fantastic, and, uh, exciting, and and more books. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna see how this one goes. It was, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's an incredible amount of work, and it is also a 
I feel like you need to, great books come from powerful experiences. So I think until I build my next thing and really have a, a concrete um, set of experiences I can write about, yeah. I might wait. Yeah. What about a kid's book? Kid's book. That sounds pretty book lovely, book. actually. Yeah. It's something completely different. Well, no, yeah. yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> I went to talk this morning about writing. Little whiteboard illustrations, yeah, yeah. stick yeah. figures, yeah. all that. I went to talk this morning about writing a book, and he made it sound really easy. Oh. I was sat there thinking, it's not. And yeah, we should you... uh, bum rush that stage. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. That, is, that is not the case. Yeah. No, it didn't sound it. I was kind of taking notes, and he said, he was a good guy, he was really energetic, I enjoyed his talk, but... Start talking about going on up work and things like Elon's and stuff to get your book. And I was oh, like, oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, this I, isn't a route I don't want to go down. I guess that's technically a book. Yeah. 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 But it, it's what I think. I only get a ghostwriter. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of talk and people out there just saying, write a book, get a sticker that says, I'm an author, and Ugh. it's an influencer thing. And mm. it's, yeah, it's. I mean, at that way. point, it's like, I have a Twitter account. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. Yeah, exactly. No well one's done. Ever read it, but, you yeah. managed to type your password twice. I'm yeah. impressed. Yeah. 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 We've got two girls back at the office, Amy and Danielle. They're massive fans of you. Could you just give a shout out to them to them girls? Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Amy and Danielle, I, I hope to see you at a conference sometime soon. It'd be Definitely. great to meet you. Oh, awesome. Great stuff. That will make that Okay, well, uh, thank you again so much. Oh, and, my uh, pleasure. We'll, we'll come and see you tomorrow anyway. So, uh, best of awesome. luck and uh, absolutely brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank, thank you, Rand. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Take care, care guys. Cheers. And uh, don't forget to uh, to buy Rand's book when it comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't normally do plugs. That was good. Bye bye. Bye.